Okay, this is John Burroughs. I'm going to move on to chapter 21 of my autobiography, Seven Years to Life. The name of this chapter is called Homework. I was beginning to think that moving to California was not a bad idea after all. It seems that the terrorist teaching methods used at St. Teresa's had given me a slight advantage over the rest of my seventh grade class. As far as the basic subjects were concerned, most of what was being taught was covered the prior year. However, the teacher was just doing a quick review of the sixth grade. It was not long before that review was completed and we began tackling seventh grade subjects. Homework was handed out on a daily basis and depending on the nature and length of the assignments, an appropriate due date was determined for each assignment. Like any other school, we were given quizzes and tests in order to chart our progress and to ver fairly evaluate each student for the purposes of grading. I was doing great as far as grades were concerned, but what puzzled me was that it seemed everyone else appeared to be a model student also. This has been going on for the first this had been going on for the first four weeks or so. I just figured everyone had to decided to get off to a great start or the same tactics that were used at St. Teresa's were also used here, though I had seen no evidence supporting my theory thus far. Still, it did not seem logical to me because even at a young age, I learned that no matter where you go or what you do, you are going to find at least one fuck up. So I decided to investigate and find out if my hypothesis was true. The following two weeks, I did not turn in one single homework assignment, and I can't lie. I was fully expecting to get my ass whipped. However, that ass whipping never came. A couple of days later, Sister Angela Marie walked into the classroom with a scowl on her face, and I thought to myself, bend over, you're going to feel the wrath of God. To my surprise, this did not occur either. She turned to the blackboard, picked up a piece of chalk, and on the top of the board, she wrote in big letters, missing homework assignments. Underneath that heading, she listed the homework assignments that were due sometime in the last two weeks. And as you can well imagine, my name was listed on all of them. Now I knew for sure I was going to get that ass whipping, but instead I was sent home with a letter requesting a meeting with my parents. Of course, as usual, as usual, it would be with one parent seeing that the other was at sea. The letter did explain the purpose of the meeting and the look on my mom's face wordlessly insinuated why don't you give him a good beating and believe me that will set him back on the right track. It was not that my mom was a strong proponent of corporal punishment but her entire life up until this point was lived on the east coast and while I was living out there uh, those spare the rod methods intimidated me enough that I did my best in school where I was reasonably well behaved that she had never experienced what I will call a behavioral and disciplinary strategy meeting. By the way, I was required to attend the meeting so I could be questioned as to why this was happening in order to develop a plan to stop it in its tracks. The meeting depending on how you look at it, was one of the best or worst turning points of my life. First of all, I found out that physically disciplining a child was not tolerated at St. Matthew's. My mom knew me well, and when she, when she heard that statement, she knew her life and my life were going to change forever. Secondly, we were told that the philosophy adopted by the school was one of tolerance and understanding. They felt each student was unique and different from each other and that it was their mission to provide a strong grammar school education while at the same time laid the foundation for the social skills that would be necessary to achieve success and a feeling of belonging to something greater than themselves. 
It was a very circuitous way of expressing that fear-motivated learning could cause deep emotional scars later in life. Sister Angela Marie went on to explain to my mom that she felt that I had already been scarred just by years of fear that I experienced at St. Teresa's. At this point, I thought my mom was going to jump out of the chair and give Sister Angela Marie a few scars of her own. Finally, we were told that grades were important because they signified the amount of hard work necessary to attain them, but once again, we were reminded that we were all different, and what comes easy for some may be quite difficult for others, but their main objective was to provide the necessary educational and social tools that in the end would make each child a valuable, respectful adult that would do his or her part to make the world a better place. Whatever philosophy or process that any grammar school chooses to utilize as their cornerstone to learning, it must be realized that one size does not fit all. In the end, I chose a path where formal education, in any sense, was not right for me. I was pretty much going to be an experiential learner for the rest of my life. The decision, I think, made me better prepared to handle the trials and tribulations that life throws at you. I do regret, however, that I never had the inclination to pursue higher education, though I had more than enough opportunities to do so. You will find in some of the forthcoming stories that my lack of respect for schooling, if you will, became more pronounced largely during my high school years due to the culture of the 1960s and the recurring theme of protest that dominated that time period. Like any other man, I, I have my fair share of attributes and weaknesses and the regret that my decision to be my own person, regardless of the consequences, was still a decision that led me to where I am today and in that place where I exist today lie maybe the toughest challenges and hardships I've ever had to face. Yet, there is no place I would rather be.